Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux news edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show, hang out in our live chat, engage in the off camera, behind the scenes shenanigans. You can go ahead and catch the show live over there. But hey, if you just want to see the content and uh, what's going on in the news, that's why we release these shorter videos. Let's go ahead and get right on in. First of all, you guys that like gaming and Steam OS, SteamOS is branching out into other uh, devices. This is the Asus ROG Alley. Uh, this is the first one. I believe there's two of these, uh, which was traditionally a Windows 11 device. And most people said it's a neat little device, but Windows kind of sucks on a handheld device. I just think Windows sucks everywhere, but that's my personal opinion as a Linux channel guy. Anyway, yes, I know. We like joking around. But SteamOS has pushed some things to support the button configurations and a few other things the Asus ROG Halley has on it. And so people reached out to Steam to say, hey, does this mean we're coming? And they say, it's not there completely yet. But it is in active development. So pretty soon, if you have an Asus ROG Alley, you will be able to install Steam OS on it and take advantage of all of your Steam things um, from right on there. And so uh, that is good news for everyone that likes Steams. And I, I really like Steam. I'm not a gamer, but I really like Steam for what it's doing and the very positive progress it's making towards gaming on Linux, which really is that last thing that really stands in most people's way is I can't game on Linux. So you're willing to trade all of the stuff you're trading to play a video game. Yeah, may as well put that Mark of the Beast on your hand right now. Sorry, guys, I've been studying eschatology lately. I'm all over the Mark of the Beast stuff right now. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Canonical is going to announce a major change in the upcoming versions of Ubuntu. Uh, this deals with a kernel change. So if you remember, they have a very rigid cycle. Now, uh, curiously, for like the second time in a row, they there's enough bugs that their, their next release is going to be delayed for a week or so. Uh, but... It's the 2404.1, uh, to clarify, is going to be uh, delayed because of some bugs. But what happens is in the Ubuntu release cycle, they have uh, various milestones, and one of those is the kernel freeze. The kernel freeze happens several weeks before the Ubuntu is ready to move into your uh, your uh, beta testing regions. And then what happens there is whatever kernel is in active development, that is the kernel that they get used, that gets used. Well, they're recognizing, like many other people are recognizing, kernels are getting better and stable and more reliable. Linux Mint has just made this, instead of using really old kernels, the latest Linux Mint, when I just upgraded mine to 22, it even stopped using the kernel I was using, it installed the latest 6.8 kernel. So I'm literally running the latest Linux kernel on that machine. And so that is what Ubuntu is going to do, um, which caused some people, as we were reading through this last night, to go, uh, this is possibly is a little concerning because even if the like they're not doing this kernel freeze anymore, Whatever kernel is in active development right there, that is the kernel they're going to be shipping with, even if it doesn't even come out for a day or two before the Ubuntu officially releases. They say they're going to get the kernel, they're going to patch it for all things they do Ubuntu, because they don't just do the kernel, they do a lot of changes and modifications to deal with Ubuntu's use case. And so what ends up happening is they are going to effectively be shipping the absolute latest kernel with these versions of Ubuntu rather than the, the latest stable kernel at the time of the kernel freeze several weeks before the release cycle. So it is a big change and likely we're not going to see any major issues, but it's curious to see what is uh, going on. Uh, next up is the Linux Foundation is looking to become more involved in AI models. Now, as you know, on this channel, I am a massive critic of AI. I think it is a, a bad thing uh, for society at large. I think that AI is going to be the thing that really leads our society. Best case scenario, it leads our society into total idiocracy. We're just going to be running around going, <laughs> laughing at farts and wearing Crocs all day. I mean, that's how our life's going to be. Uh, but um, that's AI is going to lead us there um, if it doesn't enslave us, imprison us, or terminate us. <laughs> so, uh, but that being said, uh, what the they are doing, I, I I do sort of support this because they are really. 
really putting a lot of power behind the open source versions that are saying they're open source, they're locally run, they're free, they will always be free, and the data that you interact with generally is yours. And so because of that, I really support what the Linux Foundation is doing here, even though I'm not a fan of AI. I'm not, I, I generally don't want to use it. I think it's generally bad. And before that reason, I'm just, I, I just cautiously keep away because it's, yes, I recognize that I might be leaving things on the table with that rigid approach. But at the same time, I genuinely think that it's going to lead to a degradation of our society. So I would be a hypocrite if I were to be embracing it. But the way they're doing it is actually pretty good. And we need somebody to step in and do this rather than, you know, meta pretending to have this open source AI that's not going to harvest your data. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a card about my uncontrollable laughing behavior now from the Joker. Um, but that's Linux Foundation is looking into it, and I support that model, even though I'm not necessarily going to be a user thereof. And on to our final one. Um, in some multiple benchmarks, that it was found that uh, Linux beat Windows on nearly every benchmark application. The only application they said Windows seemed to work better is Handbrake, for whatever reason. Uh, but they used um, Nobera Linux was the specific Linux distribution they used. They compared this to the currently available 24H2. Now, my new 24H4 is right around the corner, and there's speculation that that might actually work a little bit better on the Ryzen 9000, but we don't actually have it out to fully test it yet. And so they tested it with the current stable available, and they tested it with uh, Nobira Linux. I'm not sure why they chose Nobira, but it'd be interesting to run the same thing. Let's test uh, Nobira with, uh, versus Ubuntu, versus Linux Mint, versus Arch. Arch would be a good one, being is that um, uh, SteamOS it contributes a lot to, to Arch. I, it'd be really neat if they did that, although I can't remember if Nobera might be based on Arch. I just can't remember. Uh, I know I reviewed it. I don't remember everything about every Linux distribution I reviewed. Uh, but looking at some of their benchmarks, uh, they actually, here's Nobera Linux versus Windows. They looked at average FPS. Um, and then uh, they looked at um, uh, P1 and P0. I'm not a benchmarks guy. I'm not a hardware guy. I don't know what some of these charts mean. But they're just indicating that on each of the benchmarks, you can see their Linux is beating that out. Um here, Nobera Linux is beating out Windows. Again, 24H2. Here is actually uh, a variety of, I believe this was a variety of different um, uh, different processors on Nobera Linux. And I think this one that they're working with here is the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 at the bottom. So the two darker red lines at the bottom. So we had the blue lines at the top are... Uh, core processors, i5 to i9, and then these are the Ryzen's. Like, my computer's so old, mine's not even on the list. Like, I'm still running a Ryzen 5 1600. I swear it was state-of-the-art when I built this computer, but <laughs> time for an upgrade, yo. <laughs> so I must be down here somewhere, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, you can see that uh, it's compared to these, assuming that the larger number is better, it does look like these, these ones down here are going to outperform it a little bit. Uh, those are all, oh, those are all Ryzen 9, so, so that's why. Those are Ryzen 9s. Uh, looking at other 5s and 7s, the best 7, of course, is significantly beat out, and the best 5 is significantly beat out. So you can see that it is actually performing pretty well. I don't remember if it was this article, but one of the other, other articles I read on this mentioned that, that Handbrake was the only application that... Uh, didn't uh, didn't seem to work out well. So there is our Linux news. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a locals page. Switch to linux.locals.com. You can jump on over there. Uh, of course, we'll be starting up our short story series here in a couple months, and uh, we are getting very close to releasing our first anthology of short stories. Um, of course, those are all done. If you are on any of our supporter networks, you can still go back and read all those. Uh, and then uh, as they roll out, you have the audiobook is available for one month. And then we'll make the audiobook, the print book, and ebooks available to everybody in the public uh, soon. But um, you can get those first by joining in over there on that community. So, with that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.
Thanks.